The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. So welcome into my state of mind on this Thursday evening. It's been a beautiful week weather-wise, and we've got changes coming. We've got a phase two opening coming to Rhode Island, and it's going to affect a lot of uh, a lot of things. And while it feels almost like a celebration of sorts, it also feels a little bit risky, right? So we are going to spend uh, a significant amount of time kind of just riding with the phasing changes and the things that people are doing to go from phase one to phase two over the next few weeks. But one of the conversations that I've been looking forward to having here on the program is uh, one with uh, John Heason White Jr., the uh, chairman of Takeo Comfort Solutions. He is a friend. Uh, he's a leader in the community, a philanthropist, and his CEO, Cheryl Merchant, has taken the reins of the company and, you know, in a year's time now had to face this COVID-19 pandemic, you know, operating a company with near a thousand people internationally and one with a substantial investment here in the community is a daunting task in the middle of all of this. But uh, the notes that they give us both on the uh, the culture of their company, what happened when the virus hit and what they did, the thinking process and advice for other companies as to how they ought to go about business, I think is a worthy conversation for uh, for tonight. So. We shall, uh, we shall, we shall get it on. Now we may uh, see this program more than once, but the the original broadcast is Thursday, May twenty eighth. We are still in a record day before dynamic, as we continue to uh, to work on our operational uh, issues with uh, Dan York State of Mind and the building and social distancing and staffing. But it's great to be back here now in our second full week. Uh, the interview with those two executives. When we come back on Dan York State of Mind, please stay with us. Welcome into my state of mind. This is a, an important show. We're going to talk to some real business minds here about how they've dealt with the entire situation, uh, which of course is ever changing. And uh, he's he's a sponsor of this program, but he's also a dear friend of mine and a, and a great philanthropist in the community. That's John Hazelwood Jr., who's the chairman of Takeo Comfort Solutions, uh, with a worldwide. Uh, footprint right now, and his CEO, Cheryl Merchant, who did 20 years at Hope Global in Providence uh, as president and CEO, and has moved over to Takeo Comfort Solutions effective January of 2019. I introduce both of them now to uh, to the Zoom Dan York State of Mind <laughs> podcast. Uh, Johnny, Cheryl, thank you very much for joining me. Great to have you. It's great to be here. It's Don't a it. pleasure, Dan. This is fun. Uh, I, I, how are we doing? Simple question. <laughs> How are we doing? Who we or we? I mean, we. How how is how are you? How are we? How is the company? How are let's, let's, let, let's start with the fact that we don't know what day it is. We don't care what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I just know it's is right. So, <laughs> but we but we started off. Um, we started this this thing off in March, and and I would say that. Um, Cheryl and I were were together on this. We were very aggressive in how we uh, approached the. Um, uh, the situation in terms of, of being conservative and, and trying to do the right thing. People thought we were absolutely crazy. We shut down international travel in March. We shut down uh, um, uh, domestic travel a week later. We, 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 we pulled the plugs on all kinds of things. We went to AB groups. She can talk more about that and all, but, but we're very aggressive and, uh, and we have not backed off that. And it's, and it's painful because it, it cost us some production time. It cost us, uh, you know, for a while, half, you know, half the workforce, any half of the time, right? So, uh, uh, but Cheryl's done a Cheryl is, and, and so I'm, I'm doing too much talking here because Cheryl has really been running this thing uh, from, a, from a daily operational basis. And, and I would say spectacularly so because we're, you know, we're moving ahead. Dan. So remind everybody what, what Takeo makes produced oh. manufacturing. So people ask me that over the years, I've never really had a good answer, but I've, I've come up with one. We make, we make, um, uh, pumps, valves, and and building automation equipment for the uh, uh, commercial and residential HVAC heating and cooling business. Okay, Cheryl, what 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 hit? You're here a year at the company, uh, you know, making your your impact and and establishing your footprint, and then this happens. What's changed in terms of your CEO mindset operationally at, at, with a company the, the size and import of Takeo? We came out of the gun, uh, all of us sitting there making decisions together um, and did exactly what Johnny says, is, uh, was aggressive and started. We had to cut our workforce in half because the social distancing, we only had uh, 
room for half of the people and sending everybody home that could and handing out computers. And when Johnny says it hurt, it did. I mean, we are absolutely essential. Uh, our equipment goes into hospitals and the hotels that are being used to, to house uh, first responders and, uh, you know, residential places everywhere and homes and heating and cooling and water. And, and so we had, uh, we went into a huge uh, backlog uh, of past due and struggled through with constant phone calls to customers and suppliers and um, talk about uh, emergency work, right? But we're coming right out of it just as aggressive. And, and we're very proud of that. So we are working full steam right now, Dan. Okay, so what's interesting, uh, I will tell you folks, uh, on the, John visited me on the radio in March, uh, and we went out for, for dinner like we, we usually do, and it was just at the beginning of this thing. You were in the studio with me, John, and, we, and, we, and you had already decided to cut international travel. You were very concerned about your people. You've always been concerned about your people. It, it's it's an, it, that's your, your most precious commodity. Uh, I think you were ahead of everybody on, on making that decision. So it was kind of funny. Only days later, I mean, days, maybe not even a full week, the whole world kind of snapped like a rubber band back to that mindset. So uh, tell me about the consciousness that you had at the beginning of this whole thing, knowing that it was going to be something that was not just a routine calamity, something that was much bigger. I, I, I've always had a sixth sense about things. And, and this thing came up and, and slapped me in the face uh, probably in, in, in January sometime when it started to kind of get some traction. And, and, and the concern was, was, was this for me, Dan. It wasn't so much uh, to, 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 there's no bravado involved here. It's easier for people sometimes if you help them make a decision. So I think uh, what we were able to do, I did it on a personal level with a bunch of people that I do a trip with every winter, canceled that so that they didn't have to make that decision or be the one person that didn't go or whatever, you know, we, I, I, uh, that's how that all unfolded. And, and, um, and, and I just think we were, we were uh, fortuitous and lucky and fortunate to, uh, uh, to have taken in Cheryl. And, and, and this was not a Johnny White, Cheryl Merchant decision. Cheryl sat down and listened to every single member of her team. I was there in the room and went around and listened to what everybody thought about this whole situation. And then she said, okay, good to hear it all. I've taken you under all this under advisement. This is what we're doing. And it was great leadership. All right. Well, so we, Dan, we got to tell you, we've been watching this thing. I mean, we, we have uh, suppliers in China. We have a plant in uh, Vietnam, uh, Italy, in the heart of this whole thing. Switzerland, they're in shutdown. I mean, so we've really, Johnny and I have been talking about this uh, for, you know, continually uh, and with the team watching with our supply base and what we were going to do with customers all over. And uh, just that's part of why we became so aggressive. We had, we, we've been you know, uh, being smart about the thing, seeing what had happened in China, how did they hack, how long did it take them, what did they do, what what worked, and uh, you were absolutely right about his caring for the employees, and it's why I work for this gentleman, you know, I, I feel the exact same way, the greatest asset, and so we, we did every measure we could to keep them safe. Okay, why don't we do this, I'm going to pause when we come back, I want to, I want to get some operational advice past just your own experience for, for others out there. Wanting yeah. Got sure. ideas on that. We got ideas. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to be valuable. We'll do that when we come back on my state of mind. Stick with us. My state of mind, John Hazen White Jr., the chairman of Takeo Comfort Solutions, and Cheryl Merchant, his uh, president and CEO, are my guests here for, for this evening. Uh, we covered some of your instinct in, in reorganizational uh, moves in, in the middle of this whole thing and up, up, up to present time. But Cheryl, give me what you think is uh, a, a broader picture bit of advice for people in your position in companies that are small, mid, even even large. I mean, I don't consider you a small business. You're, I mean, you have 600 employees locally. Uh, about a thousand globally. No. A thousand. I mean, that is a substantial, substantial organization. Yet, I know that your company has a, a very local touch. One only has to walk through the, uh, the plant to, to know how, how, how connected people are. What, what, is your, what was your first and what would you think would be a great bit of first advice um, if you still have bosses of companies out there scrambling to think about how to think about this thing? Yeah, the, you know, in, in, in all ways, I've always thought uh, treat as you want to be treated. And the first thing that we wanted to do was keep these people safe. And yet at the same time, um, this is our livelihood. 
I mean, those thousand of people, they depend on the leadership of this company to maintain that livelihood. So we had to do both. It was a day to day. What do we got to do today? We, we created a task force. Um, Johnny and I have been amazing partners. We pulled the executive team together 730 every single morning. Uh, and it was the, it was the football huddle. What are we doing? What, what happened yesterday? What do we got to do today? What's hot? Where's everybody at? And we did that with our global team. And so every single day, focusing there, but also uh, reaching to the next level of as soon as we can within days, we were, okay, let's, let's focus to the business folks. You know, we've got customers out there. How are we taking care of them? We got supply base. How are we taking care of them? Uh, what's next? Where were we at? What issues are going on? So it was two prong, hundred percent for the people and then taking to the, to the, uh, keeping the focus to the business. And, and we've been putting that in documentation. Um, so a lot of lessons learned. Um, we've got a, a head of our health and safety and our operations guys globally. Uh, they all, we all have the same philosophy. So we are um, absolutely putting down into words as to what does our company, what does TACO look like, you know, after we're not in crisis and we're not in crisis. So how does it look like after that? Sure, Jeff, okay. Jeff, what, 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 what's the temperament when you approach this? Uh, What's the psychological mindset? You mean um, from who? From, 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 from you, from the company? Uh, what are you doing? Think, you, know, you, you, know, you know, Dave? You know? Yeah, you know, you know, I think it comes down to um, uh, trying to instill, and, and, and this is something I would, I, would, I, would, I would encourage everybody to think about, no matter where we are in, in, the, in this world, in this life, but is to instill confidence in people that you're doing everything you can to protect them because because they 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 want to feel safe everybody wants to i want to feel safe you know and 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 so uh i think what we've worked so hard to do and this is very very difficult by the way because if you think about taco for instance and everybody's got their own quirkiness but if you think about taco we make pumps and valves for heating and air conditioning let's just say that right and we make little ones and we make big ones Right, we make tiny ones this big and ones the size of this uh, room, but um, the big ones lend themselves to distancing. You know, you got ten feet between people. Think about little valves and little circulators where I have spent forty years trying to trying to trying to efficientize this place, if that's a real word, right? And so people are like right next to each other. Now I got to undo all that. Cheryl's had to undo all that with her people and and go anti lean. Yeah, and it's Eileen. It's, it's the antithesis of everything we did, but that's okay. That's okay. the part. Here's, here's the deal, Danny. Here's the deal. In my lifetime, and I, I, I've, I've come to think after this silly thing that I was born for crisis, you know, because two years ago, remember what we went through, right? And, um, and so the thing is that, that there's never a better time to really improve anything until you have to. You know, I've been around a long time. I've seen continual improvement teams. Also. It's all good. But there's no better time to really make, 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 make incredible gains than, than a crisis like this. And, and so undoing, as Cheryl said, the unleaning is, is not a bad thing. We're, we're learning how to do things better and differently. Well, people, yeah, it's, it's actually a new lean. There for a second. So people understand lean technology is a philosophy and a, and a practice that uh, is all about efficiency and you know, shortest distance between two points, people working together synergistically and all that kind of stuff. To have to spread out is antithetical, as Cheryl's kind of hinting to that. Will there be now some non-lean flavor in the lean technology that Chaco resumes when we are back to normal? Oh, Dan, there's no normal. And it's, the, it's actually a new lean. I mean, we are finding, we've got teams right now that are working, as Johnny says, you know, opportunities on, uh, all right, this is the way we are. This is where we're going to be. We got plexiglass. We've got spacing out. We've spread out machines. We put inventory in between machines where there wasn't. Um, so it's a whole new level. And we took a 5S program, which many, many uh, of I'm sure your viewers are very familiar with. And we We've changed it into the success. You know, we've added sanitation at the end of it. We've put clean your hands in when we do our exercises. Um, and, and just taking new levels of cleaning and taking care of our thing. We don't just sweep our areas, but we wipe everything down. So it's just adding and, and going to the next level. But the one thing I wanted to, to scream about, and Johnny started to allude to this, is 
man, if there's one thing you've got to do, it's communicate, communicate, communicate. We put out daily alerts from our, the, our global HRVP uh, to our entire workforce on here's everything that's going on from our task force meetings, from their leadership. We held Te we rolled out teams across our entire company and uh, held meetings with our global teams, our salary teams, our, our people that were stuck at home wondering, you know, what, what's going on in there, you know, with our workforce walking around one person with meeting with five or six people that are all spread out everywhere. So communicate, communicate, communicate. They just wanted to know, like Johnny said, we're doing everything to keep you safe. We're doing everything to keep this company up and they trust they trust. It's just, uh, first of all, you've got that kind of workforce, but we took it to a new level. I'm going to break here and uh, come back and have some final thoughts, not only about uh, how their operation is running, but with their bigger picture thoughts about the community, the economy, and all that kind of a thing uh, with the uh, executives to take over comfort solutions. Stay with us. On the next day. To my state of mind here, Dan York, or Cheryl Merchant, the President and CEO of Take Takeo Comfort Solutions, and of course, Johnny White, the Chairman of, uh, of, of the company. Um, tell me about your, look, Takeo's going to make it, right? Uh, the whole, you're going to, it's, you're going to, you're going to gut through this thing that the balance sheet may be a little quirky, but you'll be, you'll, you'll figure it out. Talk to me about your confidence level about the, uh, international economy and more importantly, I think for our viewers, the, the local economy, Johnny, do you have a big picture view on this right now? Well, I, w I would say this. In the beginning, you know, everybody was saying, well, you know, this is going to be a V-shaped thing, right? We're going to go down and then right back up. And, you know, I was kind of thinking, hmm, okay, I, I, I don't, I'm not an economist, but I mean, that would be great. Well, there's no chance. And this is uh, uh, is going to take a long time to crawl out of. I mean, every day I read another thing. I just read a thing somewhere online that said uh, PPAC is not going to open until 2021. You know, I mean, I, these are these are these are going to be devastating. What's going to happen with restaurants? I mean, these poor people have, you know, I don't know how they've even survived this long. A lot of them, but you know, if they can't open and uh, at a hundred percent, they're going to have a problem. Cheryl, you have a, have every bit the same perspectives as I do, and and uh, the worldwide's a whole different scenario. I, I one of those problems is there's not going to be any international travel. I'm sure for the rest of this year, you know. And, yeah. Big changes, you know, but I got to do a shout out right now. Um, and, and Johnny will second and third me on this one, but Rhode Island Manufacturing Extension Services, oh. man, I tell you, Dan, uh, Dave uh, Chenefort from REMA has just, just been amazing. Polaris right behind it. These guys uh, talk about pulling the manufacturers together, getting a commitment, putting it in, getting into our governor and, and just saying, look, we got to stay open. We got we, You've got to allow us to keep running. We're going to, we're going to do everything we can. We're going to do it right. And we're all committed and we all signed, but uh, they were right there. And, and that was huge for Rhode Island and it, and it'll show by state by state. And uh, it, I, I talked to them at the beginning, uh, Dave, Dave and company and, uh, uh, and Carl down at Five. Yeah, they were you're on your show, right? Yeah, they were they were talking about trying to line everybody up in a manufacturing in the manufacturing community with a commitment to 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 really really doing the diligence on fighting this virus. And uh, it seems like it it caught fire the what the right way and was enough to be able to foundationally defend the manufacturing industry in this state without a complete shutdown. So. Uh, so now, now they're taking the whole new level, you know, and when you're having ISO, when you're quality certified and you're an ISO certified, uh, you, you have a complete checklist on, you know, what to do and how to do it and, and how to even do your own internal audits. Dave and Polaris right there right now, helping the companies in Rhode Island be the first out of the gun of, of how do we certify to a pandemic level? How do we certify to a health and safety level that says you are the company to work for? And uh, they've been right there helping us with that. I, I think all companies need to get to that level, understanding what, what is right and wrong and what they can do and how to do your own internal audits. And uh, it's going to be a great thing, I think. Tell me this, uh, uh, Cheryl, have you had a dark day or two? You're a very up person, but have you had a dark day or two, you know, driving in or flipping on your computer from home. I know you get near 200 people working uh, from home, but uh, have you had some days where you go, you know what, I can't do this. Uh, I just can't do this. You, you know what, if I, if I had a dark moment, I called Johnny. 
Uh, and I would say he probably does the same to me. We both uh, lean on each other and it's an amazing thing. We can do this, we can do this. And, and in the next step, we go in and we talk to everybody else. And boy, I had even my guys over in Europe and or John Jim Pietro. Oh, I, I could call out all of them in a heartbeat uh, ahead of our uh, HR with Victoria McCoy. There are just so many of them that are right there being positive. We got this, we got this. People on vacations that coming in, they, they or whatever you need and calling you on Sunday and saying, Hey, I got an idea. Um, so if there was a dark moment, it didn't last very long. Real confidence in this team. One of, one of the, Dan, one of the things that, that that's been, uh, I think concerning, and I think we're probably over it, but there are people out there, employers, I'm not saying manufacturers necessarily per se, but ma employers who have absolutely not taken this thing seriously. Okay. True. And, 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 and we have to be careful of that because that's what can hurt all of us, uh, not physically about the thing, but, but just we're trying to reopen. And, and so Takeo and Rima and Dave and, and Carl, that group, have led this state through this uh, reopening. I'm telling you right now, this, this group here has, has really, and Takeo wants to be right in front of that thing, you know, because, uh, because we do take it seriously. And yep. Yep. Dan, you know, you know Johnny, and I. You got to know the rest of Takeo. This is one hugging, loving family, right? And for people to stand at a distance and be able to say, "Man, I love you. Uh, uh, we're going to get through this. Be strong." So um, it, it, that that kind of stuff really, you can't do it alone. I can, I've heard Johnny say it over and over and over. We're going to do this together. We're going to do this together. Well, I think it's a great theme. Uh, guys, I could, I could share time with you uh, all, all night, all day, all Zoom, uh, but uh, we got to wrap it up. Uh, we'll check in with you uh, intermittently. Simply because anytime, I, anytime. Anytime. Well, you're a staple, not only a staple, uh, staple business here, but uh, uh, a real fabric of the community. Cheryl Merchant, uh, President CEO of Takeo, thank you very much, and, and John Hazen White, Chairman. Uh, all the best. Thanks, John. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Pleasure. Be safe, please. I can have certainly uh, set an example for optimism, but uh, clear thinking during this time. If you have a story that you want to tell about your company um, or as an employee, uh, the you know working through this pandemic, I think, is the thing that uh, is most common in ground and most important in terms of sharing. Uh, please, please let us know here at, uh, at uh, the Channel 12 studios and at uh, Dan York State of Mind. In the meantime, thank you very much for tuning in. You have a great evening. Don't forget to tune in the radio tomorrow, weekdays, 3 to 6 on WPRO. Thank you. Stay safe.